I have been at sea for about 40 years. Half of that, I have been taking ships through the ice, both going to the Antarctic and up here in the Arctic region where we are right now. In the time I spent in the Arctic, I have observed reduction in the area of sea ice. For example, I took this ship north of Alaska for four consecutive summers. It was usually quite difficult to go around the northern tip of the American continent. Now, new navigational routes are opening. That is uh, a significant uh, difference that you can observe on the spot. With the data the scientists are able to extract from the ice, we're able to put that all together to get a complete model of what's going on out here. We usually use 3D laser scanning in cities such as London to understand and record our surroundings. Out here in the polar regions, we're able to use this technology to understand the flows. We're able to record in precise and intricate detail what's going on with the deformations and analyse that back in the lab later on. The primary way that sea ice is changing is in its extent, also its thickness. And we have observations uh, throughout the entire satellite record uh, going back to the 1970s and we see, we've observed that the ice is declining by about 10% in extent per decade. For one, we have the rising temperatures that are observed all over the um, Arctic region. And then we have influx of warm Atlantic water into the Arctic Ocean, which um, increases the, the bottom melt of the ice. Sea ice is a habitat, and once it starts disappearing completely for one summer, these incredible creatures which live perfectly well here, are at risk. This Arctic sea ice is of vital importance, not just to the polar bears and other creatures that only live here, but to the people living right around the world. And that's because the sea ice acts like the world's air conditioner, reflecting sunlight back out to space and keeping the global climate stable. But scientists say that by 2030, the sea ice could be gone completely in the summertime due to climate change. And the only way we can try to protect the Arctic and stop climate change is by curbing our dependence on fossil fuels and moving to cleaner forms of energy.